All right, so let's go ahead and give this terrain a completely different look. I'm going to go for a very sandy, uh, almost rocky environment. So I'm going to start immediately by going to textures, add layer. Let's call this the base. And I'm going to click on add and I'm going to use the Kalahari, let's see, the, uh, the ground Kalahari rocky desert. Right? And I'm going to make this just a little bit darker. So about there should be fine. And I don't think I'm going to adjust anything else. I want to make sure in general that I've got the Eliminate Tiling selected. And you're by base. Yeah, I'm working at 4K. That's fine when I'm working with the textures. For now, 4K should be fine. But if I was going to paint using areas, definitely want to drop that down to 2 meters. All right, so I'm going to click on Textures again. And let's add another layer. So this one is going to be Light Sand. I want to make sure light sand selected, click add, and this one we're going to go for Kalahari Rocky Desert again. All right, so we've got our light sand over here. I might just drop this down a little bit. Okay, I want to change my cavity to concave so that, that the sand is basically falling underneath this region. And let's just increase the step maybe to something like 13. Oops, if that happens, press F. There we go. Looks pretty cool already. But I might just increase the overall contrast just a little bit. And now, just to make this look pretty cool and almost to create what looks like clumps of, of sand, if I go down to Slope Select and I just drag the slider to the right like this, maybe till about, let's see, 30. 33 let go you can see the way it's been masked and apply on you and being applied on you it almost seems like there's these clumps of of the sand in certain regions you can see it here as well so that 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 actually gives it a pretty pretty cool effect now if I was going to render out something like this my camera is actually going to be up here because my focal point would be in the distance maybe I'd have a character up here looking towards that region maybe that's a crash site maybe a meteor has landed there or it's a dig site or something okay so just adding in some more sand okay I'm gonna add another layer over here so add layer this one we'll call it dark dark sand make sure dark sand selected click on add and I'm gonna use Kalahari Rocky Desert again just so there's some consistency in the overall diffuse and the normal that's been used and for this one, we're going to make it a lot darker. And we're going to use the angle select. All right, so let's see. With this angle select, let's increase the width. And we'll maybe put our angle over here on 34. Maybe we want this dark sand to be located in this region over here. Just giving it some variation. Let's see, we put that on 34. And I'll put this on 136 for this terrain. So there we go. We've got some variation now. We've got some dark sand. Maybe that's a little bit too dark. Maybe something like that. Uh, but we're definitely be creating some variation. You can see some of that dark sand seeping in over here. On top of the light sand as well. And this would be like the basis for creating the sand environment. Now I'll, I would continue adding some more texture layers on here, using maybe some angle select, some slope select, maybe using some areas to paint on very specific regions where I would want the sand to appear as well. Uh, but this is just one way you can create a sandy environment like this. Okay. All right, so let's see what else we can add here. I'm actually gonna add another layer. This one I'll just call it extra. I want to make sure extra selected, click on add, I'll go for rocky desert again. And this time, let's see, maybe I'll just use angle select with some concave. Maybe make this a little bit darker. And let's see, maybe we can just place this in another region. Maybe over there. And it's just it's just adding some more complexity and texture detail to our map. 
you can see now we've got some light to send over here. Maybe you want to make that a little bit darker. So it's just adding these these layers of complexity to, to your terrain just to push it to another level. So that's pretty cool. And then if I go back to surface, maybe put this on two meters, then go to filters. Let's go ahead and click on add and let's add a path. So we'll click on add path, edit path, hold down the left shift button and just left click with my mouse. And then I can maybe start building a path just like that. All right, so depending on how you want it to look, maybe you want it to be elevated like this. I'm actually going to dig into the terrain and let's add a little bit of smoothness and click on done edit path. And you can see everything just adapts, the textures, everything just adapts to what's been added. If I put this back on 4K, you can see we've actually created a path here and we've got all of these other clumps of sand starts up here and it leads down to this area so there's just there's this there's so much that you can do with this program uh, with creating the terrains and texturing them as well it's just it's so much fun and I really I really really enjoy this program a lot as you can see just by using some basic filters and textures adjusting angles slopes uh, we can actually texture terrain incredibly quickly okay Something I actually forgot to mention, uh, but a lot of the times what we're doing here, we can see it visually being applied as an actual material, but there's something called a heat map that also gives you a visual representation of where exactly uh, this, these effects are taking place. So if I'm using something like the dark sand and I go to toggle heat maps, the red area is basically an indication of exactly where this effect is taking place and where those materials are being applied as well. So if I had to scroll on here to angle select and adjust that, you'll see that the red region over here starts rotating and moving around as well. So that heat map can also be a visual representation of just exactly where this texture is being applied. But a lot of the times we can just see that visually with the actual texture when we rotate in it. But if you want to use heat maps as well, just as another form of a visual representation of where your materials are being placed, uh, then you can do that as well.